What's going on guys, Unknown Player here, and today we're back with another Destiny 2 video and a bunch more stuff to round up and discuss. There are some pretty interesting clues about the last word quest and how it involves the Thorn, but also possibly another different weapon of sorrow that we could be getting soon, as well as that one to break down some more secrets that have recently been discovered in-game that results in some bonus loot and some future content. We also have some new info from Bungie about a particular exotic that's been a very hot topic recently, as well as a roundup of some more general info you guys should be aware of. So, as always, if you enjoyed this video, a like rating is much appreciated, and let's jump into it. So let's talk about the last word and its upcoming quest in a few weeks. So we can actually see some glimpses of what we're going to be doing to get it, but also how it involves the thorn and what appears to be a brand new weapon of sorrow we might get alongside it. So in the last word quest, we're going to find a mysterious hive artifact, which appears to be this thing, and the drifter thinks it's tied to the weapons of sorrow. So those, if you don't know, are weapons corrupted by the hive that sometimes guardians use. The thorn is basically the number one original weapon of sorrow, but necrochasm is another one. Then there's a bunch of others like the touch of malice, the bad juju, the spindle or the whisper, and also malfeasance, which are kind of unconfirmed, but definitely related to the weapons of sorrow. The Drifter is going to give us pages from a stolen dark book, and this is just my speculation, but I think this book could be Toland's famous journal, which of course is filled with a bunch of hive secrets, and Toland also made the weapon Bad Juju based off the weapons of Sorrow inside this book. Now with these pages, we're going to cleanse the artifact, which then hungers for light and wants us to kill Guardians in the Crucible to feed it, and then we disrupt a hive ritual on Titan with this mission called Damnation. Remember, this is still the last word quest, even though so far it sounds identical to the Thorn one. Now this is where things get really interesting, so the Drifter thinks a certain Hive Wizard is behind it, which is definitely a reference to this character called Zyor the Unwed. She's actually the one that corrupted Rizal Azir and his Rose and turned him into Dredgen Yor and his Rose weapon into the Thorn. Now this image was actually released recently by the official Destiny lore book, and it shows what Rizal Azir actually looks like with his early Thorn, and also the wizard behind him is Zyor the Unwed, the wizard the Drifter was hinting at. Now it does get even deeper because Zyle was supposed to be married to a hive knight that makes weapons of sorrow and then in another mission we see called the conversation this is that hive knight called Enkar the weapons master. The first thing you'll probably notice is the giant thorn looking weapon in his hand as anyone's guess what it is it could be a boomer or a linear fusion rifle or a scout rifle it could be anything. The mission is level 650 and has to be on solo so no fire teams allowed but once you defeat him at some point you obtain the last word. So it says the Drifter is disturbed seeing us holding the last word, but is endlessly intrigued by the Hive weapon we uncovered. So it does seem like in this quest we're going to obtain some other Hive weapon from the Knight. I don't think it's going to be the Thorn because the Drifter would have just said that. He knows exactly what Thorn is. Plus it is supposed to come in the Joker's Wild, but this could be a whole new Weapon of Sorrow. I was always pretty confused why Bungie didn't save the last word as a surprise. They said like 20 times in every trailer how happy they were with the Whisper and the Thunderlord because they were surprises, but now they pretty much spoiled like the most hyped weapon returning. So it's just my speculation, but based on what the Drifter says, there could be a surprise exotic as well as the last word. It would explain why Bungie isn't being too secretive this time around, but whether we get to use this weapon or as a questline or time gated, there is definitely some kind of other hive weapon involved here, especially seeing as we got it from killing a hive weapons master. His job is to make hive weapons of sorrow. To round up a few related items, you can also see the progression of the hive artifact as we cleanse it and power it up throughout the quest line. The same way we have a lore book for the last word hand cannon with the text mechanica icon, there seems to be a second lore book for something hive related with the hive symbols there, so this could be again that mystery weapon. There's also this item which is a guardian's helmet that's been killed by a thorn bullet, so the little dagger thing you can see, that is what the thorn actually shoots. So currently there is someone running around in the Destiny universe using a weapon that shoots thorn rounds, so definitely again suggesting there is some kind of other hive weapon of sorrow about there that happens to shoot the exact same unique bullets as thorn. So definitely some interesting stuff and I do like how the story seems to be progressing throughout the kind of events and DLCs so this mini last word quest is going to lead directly into the Joker's Wild and the whole thing the Drift is doing so it's going to be cool to see how it turns out but of course as always leave your thoughts and speculation down below in the comments. So next up, I wanted to clarify something that I mentioned in my last video, which is how to actually get the Le Monarch exotic bow to drop. Probably the most confusing exotic we've seen so far in the game, because nobody really has known what caused it to drop for certain people. Bungie posted some more clarifications, so we do know a bit more, but initially, as I said, people were getting this from both forges on Nessus, but also when completing a hand cannon frame from last week, which seemed very strange and definitely seemed like a glitch or unintended, because in-game Bungie state the Le Monarch drops from a quest line. 
So as it turns out, the most simple answer is it does have a chance to drop when completing a powerful frame, any frame at all. So farming forges over and over without a frame is actually a waste of time. Based on this, the weapon can't drop without one. Now, unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. It's a bit more confusing because we still don't know exactly what type of weapon frame. So Bungie did say it's supposed to be a powerful frame. So the gold ones and not the gray ones are non-powerful. But I do know people and have seen people say they got it from a non-powerful frame. So I'm not exactly sure if there's some kind of glitch with the frames. But either way, at least we can rule out a bit of confusion. And that is to not waste your time farming forges without a weapon frame at all, basically. They did also clarify it can be from any forge, so of course that includes the Volander Forge on the European Dead Zone, not just those two on Nessa, so it doesn't matter where you are, you just need that frame. It does beg the question where the other two exotics are supposed to come from, of course the Jotun, the little fusion rifle, grenade launcher, flame ball thing, and the sniper rifle is an Argy's bird, and these two are related to the Black Army Houses and have some pretty big lore significance, but of course when we do finally find out, I'll let you guys know when and where they're dropping from. So next up, we finally have all three of the codes unlocked within the Volunder Forge. With the bow you can get this week, as expected, it does have the ability to see another set of new symbols in here. So once you have the bow, same as the first two sets I showed off, you need to shoot this new set. You want to stand on the butterfly right here and then shoot the leaves or the trees on the box. Then the page on the rock behind you. And then next you want to stand on the half sun thing on the floor. And then you want to shoot the heart over there twice. Then you got the leaves back on the first box and then whatever that thing is supposed to be on the ceiling and now you're done the emblem should drop for you if you've done it correctly so the point of doing this of course is to activate the third and final crest over on the floor there and this does actually make text appear on the big screen when you interact it so it decodes into this big block of text it says with eyes fixed past dawn's end the fourth flame will rise bring the knowledge obtained to the raiders of secrets steal thyself so the first part means past the dawning, so after the dawning event physically ends, the fourth flame is going to rise. This is definitely hinting at the fourth forge, which we know is coming right after dawning does actually finish. Then it says to bring the knowledge obtained to the Raiders of Secrets, which I feel like could be us, the Guardians, whoever this is they want us to know, to prepare for this forge and also use the knowledge we learned in here with the symbols and the codes in there as well. Steal thyself means to prepare and ready yourself for something that's basically going to be difficult and you don't want to do. So I'm guessing this forge is supposed to be difficult and that is the entire secret of this Volunder Forge. It's not very significant, obviously gameplay wise, but I guess it's a tease for future content. And I do want to know who this person is, why they sent us a message and why have we not met them yet. But either way, that is a secret. I'll put a link down below in the description to some of the guys that worked on the puzzles and deciphering the codes. Bungie are definitely doubling down on the secrets, but I'm sure we're not done yet. So leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. Now on the topic of secrets, we do also have of course the third key required for the mystery box. This is going to be the butterfly lock. So exact same as the previous two, you want to wait until the middle round in between the first and two encounters, not the boss wave, but the first two normal waves in between those, there's going to be two drones that spawn. They're on identical pillars on each side, so pretty easy to shoot. And once you do that, you can then get a chest at the end of the forge, and that's going to give you the butterfly lock key. So now on three out of four, we just need the black army one, which I'm guessing is going to be this fourth forge. So next up, I wanted to highlight some of the best weapons that have come available recently and also some PSAs of useful info about these weapons, but firstly is the Blast Furnace, of course the Pulse Rifle available this week. This thing is actually a monster, it's one of the best weapons in the game and with the right roll, could replace pretty much most of your primaries in both Crucible and PvE. Now of course perk roll is always subjective, it's down to personal preference and more importantly playstyle, everyone prefers different things but in general i would say try to go for stability especially on console with this thing but all the base stats are so good stability is really the only problem i'd say that and maybe reload like always with the scopes you want a short zoom one and for the mag options i'd say stability and reload now the perks for this thing are for some reason really unique because this weapon only the blast furnace can roll feeding frenzy now this was a regular perk you could get back in destiny 1 on any weapon it was of course only thunderlord which did make its way in destiny 2 but for some reason they added it to this weapon so it makes it an absolute monster also strangely it seems to have pretty much the same reload speed as outlaw which of course requires headshots so for this thing you can body shot and get pretty much the same benefit as outlaw for that reason outlaw is really not the best choice here feeding frenzy is just kind of undoubtedly the winner because you don't need a headshot and it's got the same effect again it's kind of weird that that's a thing but that's how it works sounds like blasphemy saying that outlaw is not the best but zen moment is also going to be pretty good on console for bonus stability in the second choice again nothing too surprising here kill clip or rampage those two are going to be your choices in general, I would say that Rampage is better for PvE. I prefer it a lot more in there because you can just spam a bunch of shots and not worry about headshots. And especially with Feeding Frenzy, you literally just mow down hit fire and just don't worry about aiming. Whereas Kill Clip is going to be very, very good for Crucible where this thing is already a two burst kill if you manage to get all your shots. But it's going to do crazy damage and just melt stuff if you get Kill Clip activated. 
So my best roll that I've gotten so far is actually pretty perfect. I'd say I'm not really going to look for any more because this is probably the best I'll get. It's basically a perfect PvE roll. So you've got short range scope, flared Magol gives five stability and 15 reload speed. Then you've got feeding frenzy and rampage which is a great combo. And also the masterwork is stability. So I'm really happy with this thing. And yeah, definitely one of the best primaries I'd say in the game. Now the other weapon, the bow, is also actually a pretty good weapon. This, believe it or not, there's only actually two bows in the primary kinetic slot, the other one being no turning back. So that one is a precision frame. It takes longer to draw but does more damage, whereas this thing, the spiteful fang, is actually in the lightweight frame, so you can just spam shots. And I tend to prefer PvE personally, especially with Rampage, but this thing is actually really good, definitely worth going for. So comment down below what kind of roles have you guys got on these weapons i'll be interested to see but i do like how you can just farm these every week there's two weapons to just grind for it's a pretty like fun system in terms of grinding for random rolls but again let me know what you think about that as well but that's going to do it for this video of course if you enjoyed it leaving a like rating it down below before you go is much appreciated of course if you want to stay up to date with my future videos and you can subscribe it down below and turn on notifications by hitting the bell to never miss a video but hopefully you guys enjoy the holidays i appreciate you for watching and i'll see you all in the next one